What's up, guys? Next Best Thing Studio here, and I'm with Andrew Jones, the Andrew Jones, the Andrew Jones. at the Montreal Audio Fest. <laughs> uh, Andrew, um, just right off the bat, we know you've designed so many speakers at multiple companies, uh, and we just want to know, you know, what are you working on right now, and what would you recommend for those who are trying to become a, you know, new to high fidelity audio when they're trying to make like a nice two-channel setup? What would you recommend? Well. If I told you I was what I was working on now, I'd have to kill you, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but more affordable speakers again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been gradually going up. Yeah. Uh, I'm coming back down again. Yeah. Um, and then I've got all of the things in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. for, I want to attack the high end at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but the key to putting together a good system, it's not just about the system, it's about the room you put it in. Mm -hmm. So you really want to pay attention to setup. Mm -hmm. And what I do in a show, no matter what cost range I'm working in, yeah. I want to show what's possible when I demonstrate. Mm -hmm. To say that, look, I managed to partner this amplifier with these speakers, mm -hmm. I've treated the room this way, I've set it up, even mm -hmm. though I've only got you know, an hour when mm -hmm. I'm at a show. Yeah. But the idea is, give you an idea of just what is possible from that setup, including my speakers. Mm -hmm. So that when you do get the speakers and get them home, mm -hmm. you have a mental image of, oh, I remember it can be this good. Mm -hmm. So if it's not that good at home, mm -hmm. you know not to blame the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> you can blame the setup. And so when you're designing a speaker, what really comes first? Like, is it just being able to put it in a variety of room setups, or is this like a room setup that you like aim for? Well, I, you know, I have my lab work, yeah. and so I know where to set it up with mm -hmm. that. So as I'm measuring and developing, I have a mental image of the kind of sound that I want it to produce. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'll always work with, yeah. regardless of price point. The, so the target is always the same. Yeah. I just can't get quite as close to the target when I'm doing more affordable. Okay. But there is a kind of a pattern to what I like yeah. to be able to Is this like the, you know, the, what you've learned throughout the years and yeah. just translating in that, into that speaker, right? Yes, yes. And then when it comes down to it, um, for those who use bookshelves but want to get like a full range sound, is that even possible or is that... It's what I try and get out of the bookshelves because yeah. I deliberately sacrifice efficiency mm -hmm. to get bass extension mm -hmm. because nearly all music contains good bass. Yeah. What efficiency does for you is allow you to play louder yeah. a little bit. Yeah. How often do you play that loud? Yeah. Uh, whereas all the time you miss bass if you haven't got it, because in order to have efficiency, you can't have bass. Exactly. So I lower the efficiency, I get more bass. And so it's all way... about compromises in a oh, sense. Oh, it's always compromises. It's always compromises. Yes. And um, really, what do, you, what do you aim to see when you go up in the line, when you go up with speakers? Like, let's say you start with the Pioneers, and then you go to the, the Elax. What would be the greatest thing, like, you know, the most noticeable thing when you go up in the line? For those who are curious. Probably clarity and resolution. Mm -hmm. And then for those who, you know, can't fit a full, like, four standard speaker, how would you get a bookshelf with great bass extension? Is it just adding a subwoofer or is it more placement? The difficulty in a regular stereo setup mm -hmm. is adding in a subwoofer yeah. because the stereo amplifier isn't configured for it. So even if you add a subwoofer, you can't play any louder mm -hmm. because you're still putting the full range signal into the main speakers, yeah. unlike in a home theater setup. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as you play within those limits, you can get more bass extension. The difficulty is integrating them. Mm -hmm. you know, as the designer, my job is to integrate all the drivers together, yeah. and yet with a subwoofer, you go, you have a go, see if you can do it. Yeah. And it's endless experimentation. Yeah. So. The final question I kind of ask for you is, the whole idea of a soundbar, people hate it. Some people like it. There's clips. Clips started making you know, some soundbars for consumers. Will there ever be an Andrew Jones you know, Well, there has soundbar? been. We did well, a really good one with Pioneer. OK. And we sold loads of them. Yep. And it's like 200,000 of them. What are, what are your thoughts on just like a sound bar? Is it, is it going regressive or is it progressive when it comes down to high fidelity audio? Is like usual, the majority of sound bars are barely any better than the TVs yep. themselves. Yep. And the market for higher quality ones is very small. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. I'm actually working on that kind of stuff right now mm -hmm. and seeing what I can do. We'll see. All right. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time.